Joining me now is Maxime Flamand, the CTO of the 5G AA. Maxime, thanks very much for talking with Telecom TV. Could I start by asking you to give us an overview of the technical work that the 5G AA and its members undertake? Thank you first uh, for the offer of being here and, and uh, really appreciate the Telecom TV to, uh, to, for the invitation. Now, uh, 5G AI has been um, very much uh, targeting te te technical results and making sure that we end up with uh, technical results that can be brought to the market as soon as possible. So we work on different, um, different topics, but uh, broadly uh, making sure that 3GPP standards, so the, the standards that are supported by uh, the telecom um, world actually, are uh, brought to the vehicles and these uh, and that we express the needs from the automotive so that these standards are uh, fit for purpose. Now, I, I realize you do a lot of work in a lot of areas. Um, at the moment, with the state of 5G at the moment, what does 5G enable in this sector today? What's possible on, on what's being commercialized today? So today, if you look around, most of the cars are already equipped with 4G, 5G. So this is a given. This is something that we have to take for granted. And then um, we have to bring this to, uh, to the next level. At the moment, we see uh, the connectivity being used for telematics, for uh, emergency calls, for infotainment. But uh, eventually, this has to be uh, benefiting also some societal needs. And these societal needs are essentially safety, uh, smart traffic, or even environmentally friendly solutions. Well, let's talk about that in a little more detail. So um, as standards develop and as they evolve, as 5G evolves and, and matures, let's look sort of five, six years in, in the future. Um, how will this sector have changed? What solutions will be enabled by then? So what we are looking at is an evolution of different 3 GPP technologies and the standards, and therefore that would bring more um, reliance or more capability of using this technology for a more reliable kind of use cases. And these use cases are often leading to more automation in the cars and, um, and, and eventually a better safety. Now, here in Berlin, we saw and heard about a couple of approaches, a couple of demos um, uh, concerning V2X. There was a network-based V2X and there was a direct V2X. Can you explain what these two different approaches are and how they are complementary? Yeah, so um, we showed two, two things, perhaps also uh, different timings in terms of uh, adoption of the market. We showed uh, the, the connectivity to the mobile network, which is very scalable and that you can use today. Uh, these, uh, for these, we showcase uh, vulnerable road user protection, so pedestrian and cyclist protections. We, um, we believe that this uh, kind of um, technology is ready for market and that we can already use it to exchange the minimum set of data that would uh, at least make the driver aware of uh, the uh, the surroundings and aware of the potential pedestrians that are um, in front of the or in front of the cars. Where it uh, leads to uh, then is that um, uh, it's not enough to just have one app and uh, one um, uh, driver that just receives this information. Where we want to go is that the um, the pedestrians can use the app that they want to use that the data that is being collected by these apps are shared uh, into some kind of uh, interchange servers. And eventually, uh, when these are shared, they are then redistributed to the relevant uh, uh, driver that is uh, coming the, the way of the vulnerable road user. So the second part is um, uh, the use of a new technology, which is called 5G V2X Direct. And that technology is putting, is, is as the, the name says, is directly connecting between vehicles. And, um, and um, it has a very high throughput, very high, a very uh, high reliability, and, um, and enables then um, new kinds of interactions between the vehicles. These vehicles then can then 
uh, eventually start uh, coordinating themselves, uh, having some kind of maneuver coordinations and uh, even sharing uh, the, their sensors uh, so that uh, the traffic uh, gets safer. So it's a very clear picture of where we want to get to, um, but in order to do that, in order to make it a success, what does the industry, and telecoms industry, the automotive industry, what does it have to do to ensure the success here? Now, the first thing that we have to make sure is that they talk to each other, they trust each other, and that they um, agree on the best uh, ways to um, harmonize the solutions across the different industries. And that entails um, definitely discussions uh, that uh, will then be um, taken, taken by the market in the different uh, parts of the world. Well, Maxime, thanks very much for talking with us today. Thank you very much.